Hello and welcome to Zatas. I'm solving a very beautiful mathematics problem. Find the value of. I advise you to stop the video and think about it. You've probably realized that I'm not native in English. I'm from Brazil, so usually I'm speaking Portuguese, not English, but that's okay. Just to clarify, my name is Shandy and I'm 19. So what is the idea involved in this problem? I'll call the first series as X and the second one as Y. So we gotta prove that this part and this converge. How can we do it? Well, we have exponents and we have factorials. Ratio test! What am I talking about? L equals limit T as N goes to the infinity of AN plus 1 over AN. If L is smaller than 1, the AN series converge. If L is bigger than 1, the AN series diverge. If L equals 1, we cannot say anything about it. So we want to take the limit T of the limit T as n goes to the infinity of, well, say, ha, pi to the power of 4 times n. Why 4 times n? Because this is 4 times 1, 4 times 2, 4 times 3, and so on. Over 4 times n plus 1 factorial. Right? Yes! We can write up here pi to the power of 4 times n plus 1 over 4 times n plus 1 plus 1 factorial. This is not very beautiful, but that's okay. This is equal to pi 4 times n for n. 4 times 1, 4. Divided by 4 times n plus 4 times 1, 4. Plus 1, 5. Factorial. Divided by pi to the power of 4n. Divided by 4n plus 1 factorial. And we know that pi to the power of 4n plus 4 is equal to pi to the power of 4n times pi to the power of 4. So we can trim these things. Ha 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 ha! So this is equal to pi to the power of 4 times 4n plus 1 factorial divided by 4n plus 5 factorial. But what is the definition of factorial? For example, 5 factorial. 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So 4n plus 5 factorial is equal to 4n plus 5 times 4n plus 4 times 4n plus 3 times 4n plus 2 times 4n plus 1 factorial. So we can train these things. Oh my gosh, you're right, Chandy, you're right! I know! <laughs> I'm a bit crazy, I'm sorry. So it's gonna be this pi to the power of 4. But we know that n goes to the infinity, so the limit will be 0. 0. And we know that 0 is smaller than 1. This series converge. We can do the same idea for the second one. And you will find zero as well, so convert two. <sighs> trust me, trust me. Nice, nice, Sandy. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you remember the Taylor and McClary series? Specifically the sine one. The sine expansion, do you remember it? Sine? of x is equal to x minus x to the third power divided by 3 factorial plus 5 to the power of 5 divided by 5 factorials minus 
x to the power of 7 divided by 7 factorial plus, oh my gosh, x to the power of 9 divided by 9 factorial and so on. If x equals pi, what happens? Pi here, pi, pi, wait, pi, pi, and pi. <laughs> but we know the sign of pi is zero, so the whole thing is equal to zero. And now, what, what am I going to do? The first one, I'm going to multiply by pi. Why am I going to multiply by pi? Because I want this and this to be the same for each one. Okay, so I'm going to multiply by pi. Pi times x, pi times x, so pi times 1, pi. Pi times pi to the power of 4, pi to the power of 5, pi to the power of 9 pi to the power of 13. Ha ha! And I made it. I made it. Exactly what I was looking for. I'm going to do the same thing in the second one. So I multiply by pi to the third power. Why? Because this is going to be 4 plus 3, 7. 7. Hey hey! But I can't forget this one. Pi to the third power here. Okay. Pi to the power of 11 and pi to the power of 15. Nice. What am I going to do now? I want to subtract, subtract both of them. So pi times x minus pi to the third power y. This is equal to pi minus pi to the third power divided by 3 factorial plus pi to the, uh, the power of 5 divided by 5 factorial minus this plus this minus and so on but we know that this whole thing this whole thing is equal to zero it's the same thing buddy it's the same thing so I can say that pi times x minus pi to the third power times y is equal to zero haha <laughs> So, pi times x is equal to pi to the third power times y. We can train these things with no problem. x is equal to pi squared y. What we're looking for, x divided by y. x, this whole thing is x, and this whole thing is y. So, x divided by y. x divided by y is equal to p P, no, P is in Portuguese, I'm sorry, pi, pi squared. So, we figure out the problem. The answer is pi, pi squared. So, in this video, I'm going to speak a little bit of Portuguese, okay? Galera, valeu, muito obrigado pelo apoio aí. Nossa, falar inglês e matemática é bem complicado, não tem nada a ver. Tipo, falar inglês, cara, é mó de boas. Tipo, você chegar na rua e conversar com alguém, mas... Passar conceitos matemáticos em inglês é bem complexo, então eu realmente tentei dar o meu máximo aqui, eu devo ter errado alguma coisa, mas é porque, cara, não é tão simples, pelo que eu pareça, eu acho complicado de verdade, ainda mais um conceito que envolve um pouquinho de ensino superior, né, mas é isso aí, muito obrigado, se você é estrangeiro e fala português, tá entendendo o que eu tô falando, escreve aqui embaixo, valeu, muito obrigado, nós estamos juntos!